In this video, we will investigate the unit weight of soil and its determination. The unit weight of soil describes the gravitational force exerted by a fixed volume of soil. This can be expressed as the soil's weight divided by the soil's volume. The unit is commonly expressed in kilonewtons per cubic meter. We primarily address four distinct types of unit weight, bulk, dry, saturated and effective. The selection of the appropriate unit weight for a specific geotechnical challenge depends upon the properties of the soil and the position of the water table. The bulk unit weight characterizes the unit weight derived from comprehensive field and laboratory assessments. It is defined as the total weight of soil divided by the total volume of soil. The bulk unit weight refers to either the dry or saturated condition. Various methodologies are employed to determine the bulk unit weight with the core cutter method and thin wall push-in tube sampler standing out as the predominant techniques for cohesive soils. Our primary focus typically centers on the unit weight of cohesive soils, given their broader range of unit weight as opposed to frictional deposits. The core cutter method is most applicable for shallow depth and involves the insertion of a hollow cylinder into the undisturbed soil and subsequent excavating the cylinder. This process yields an intact sample that can be transported to the laboratory for analysis. The thin wall push-in tube sampler shares similarities with the core cutter method, but is tailored for greater depth and does not need excavation around the cylinder. It is typically integrated with borehole drilling since this method requires the removal of overburdened soil beforehand. A slender hollow cylinder is pressed into the deeper soil layers from which the tube is withdrawn containing an undisturbed sample. This method is beneficial since we can obtain the unit weight for deposits at greater depth. The cylinder samples from the core cutter or push-in tube sampler tests are brought to the laboratory. The dimensions of the intact specimen are measured to determine the volume of the soil. The mass is determined by weighing the cylinder with and without the sample to determine the mass of the soil. Based on these pieces of information and the gravitational acceleration, the bulk unit weight can be determined. But does the bulk unit weight correspond to the dry or saturated unit weight? This depends on the saturation of the specimen and the soil properties. The dry unit weight corresponds to soil without water and is defined as the weight of solids divided by the total volume of soil. The saturated unit weight corresponds to fully or partly saturated soil and is defined as the weight of solids and water divided by the total volume of soil. The water content can be determined from the intact soil sample. In the realm of frictional soils, such as sand and gravel, these are typically considered dry above the water table and saturated below it. In reality, the water content might not be exactly zero in the dry zone. However, the soil can be considered as dry above the water table due to the particle size distribution which yields high permeability, rapid water drainage and low capillarity. In numerical software, the distinction between the dry and saturated unit weight is typically based on the positioning of the water table since soil always is saturated below the water table. A standard unit weight assessment for sand might be 18 kN per cubic meter as dry while 20 kN per cubic meter are saturated. The saturated unit weight tends to exceed the dry due to the added weight from water. In the realm of cohesive soils like clay, gutia and peat, these are typically considered saturated above and below the water table. Their particle size distribution yields low permeability, slow water drainage and high capillarity effects, which enables water retention. Cohesive soils are excellent at storing water, while the water won't dissipate above the water table, as for frictional soils. Dry cohesive soils are therefore rarely encountered, but they can be found under specific weathering conditions. If the dry unit weight is sought, it can be determined based on the saturated unit weight and the water content. If a water content of 40% is measured on a soil sample with a saturated unit weight of 17 kN per cubic meter, the dry unit weight is approximately 12 kN per cubic meter. This is primarily used for theoretical purposes unless the field conditions are expected dry. 
A standard unit weight assessment of the field conditions for clay might be 17 kN per cubic meter above and below the water table. One has to be careful to distinguish between the theoretical dry unit weight and the field conditions above the water table. Finally, let's consider the effective or buoyant unit weight. This accounts for the soil's unit weight with buoyancy subtracted and is always used below the water table and never above it. Below the water table, the water yields a buoyant force that opposes the gravitational force from the soil. The effective unit weight is determined by subtracting the buoyancy from the saturated unit weight. The subtraction is never applied on the dry unit weight since the soil is always saturated below the water table. The buoyant force is commonly simplified to 10 kN per cubic meter, as this corresponds to the simplified unit weight of water. The unit weight of soil varies greatly with the composition and type. The table presented shows the general unit weight ranges for specific soil types. This concludes the video. The table presented shows the variables used and their general units. To support the channel, please like and subscribe.